and welcome to home front it's rome and today we have a special guest with us one of my favorite guests on the show dr robertson and the last time she was here you all remember we were talking about healthy body healthy minds and one specific thing that she touched on that i just want to reiterate as we kick off today's episode of home front is the sugar consumption for children and remind us what is the intake that, that kid's supposed to have? Supposed to be the equivalent of six teaspoons a day. Six teaspoons a yeah. day. And and one one bottle of soft drink Depends contains. Depends on the size, uh -huh. but it can be up to as much as four, uh, maybe even more times that. So oh. you well exceed in your intake. So we need to manage the intake of sugar yeah. that our children have. Yeah. So today, we yes, last time we spoke, we spoke mm -hmm. about healthy body, healthy minds. Mm -hmm. And today we want to focus a bit on sleep. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I've always heard of how important sleep is. Yep. How important is sleep for real? Gosh, Rome, if you only knew. So thank you again for having me on the show. Sleep is actually vitally important. We often think it's wasted time, but it's not. In fact, science is now beginning to understand it's really important for our brains to process stuff that we've learned, to de-stress for our bodies to heal and detoxify. So it's actually vital. So sleep is that important? It is, yeah. Because I know a lot of people think that, okay, you want to get some more hours in a day, so they would cut back on sleep. So how would you speak on that in terms of cutting on sleep to increase your productivity? Or is it anti-productive? It absolutely does not work if you try to cut back on sleep. So I understand, and, and as a student, I try that myself. But in fact, the research now shows that a, a brain that is sleep deprived operates much less efficiently. Yeah, in fact, it is said that if you lose as much as an hour sleep, your brain operates almost as if you had taken a lot of alcohol. Yeah, so, so you actually don't process information as well. You don't deal with emotions as well. You can't operate anywhere oh, as efficiently on a tired brain. That is why it's going so when I don't sleep. That might be why, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how much sleep is recommended for both kids and for adults? So it really depends on your age. It's a really good question. And from this, um, the National Sleep Foundation in the U.S. has a lot of good data. So what it does say, let's say primary school children, on average, what's recommended for them is somewhere between 10 and 12 hours sleep at night. 10 to 12 hours sleep at night. At night. But mm -hmm. what I'm shocked at is actually how very few children, in fact, get that. Especially now in COVID times, when routines have kind of gone out of the window, mm -hmm. maybe bedtime is no longer strict. I have a lot of children coming into the emergency room who maybe are going to bed later and later at night, or maybe being up all night, mommy and daddy have fallen asleep, and they are up on devices and what's happening is that there's no regulated sleep time for them yeah so that's for the children that's and for the children and for teenagers now the recommended time frame is somewhere between nine and eleven hours sleep a night um the average tends to be closer to about nine to ten hours but again a lot of teens are not getting that at all nine yeah. to ten hours yeah. and then now for adults, adults so adults, males and females, are a little different, and it does depend a little bit on what your body clock is like. So some people are night owls, some people are early birds, but generally speaking, it's around about uh, seven to eight hours a night. There are a few people who can do less. But, but I, I find you getting less and less yeah. from a, a baby to mm -hmm. a, a child well, to tell you about a babies. teenager to yeah. an adult. Yeah. We get less to body time at 10, 70, I need no sleep then it, then, Well, then you're, what happens <laughs> is your body time goes higher and higher. So you might need less, but you'll need it earlier in the day, in the night. Oh. They tend to go to bed earlier. But yes, babies definitely need the most of all. A newborn baby needs something like 20 hours or more. Oh, they the need, yeah, yeah. because I have a niece and to me, she just sleep, get yeah. up, drink tea, cry, play, I'm back to sleep. I'll be like, well, you live in a life of luxury. <laughs> You get to sleep all. <laughs> it does. So, well, remember, your, uh, during that time, your brain is growing and processing, and where your body is actually growing as well. So, your maximum period of growth is often during sleep for babies. Okay. Yeah. So, what about naps? Yeah. So, um, it for adults, yeah, because I like to take a, a little siesta after lunch. Yeah. They call it the itis, but yeah. um, I yeah, call yeah, it a yeah, siesta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's interesting is lots of societies where there is a siesta. Yeah, that's actually been associated with better quality of life. So having a siesta at certain times of the day can be beneficial. That's true. Mm. What I usually tell people, though, is that a siesta doesn't really replace a good uninterrupted night's sleep. So what some people will try and do is get the almost treat sleep like you're building up like a camel almost. So you're storing up the sleep deprivation and then you try and 
to make it up with naps. With nap. Yeah, so that doesn't so work. So it don't work like no. that. But they the nap can still help you. Yes, absolutely. Could it help your productivity after yeah. lunch? Yeah, and can. And if I, what they usually say is if, if you have a problem, it may be good to take a little power nap and then try and address it. Ah, yeah. it works for me. I yeah. mean, personally, I, I would take a power nap after lunch and then it helps me after. Yeah, so, absolutely. So bosses, if you see someone sleeping at their desk right after lunch, don't be alarmed. It could be a siesta or a power nap <laughs> to help to be more productive in the afternoon period. Or they could probably just be... Sleeping on the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I know that we're in the pandemic and a lot of people's sleep patterns have been broken up and you mentioned children and adolescents yeah. uh, on these devices. What about screen time and cutting off and, and, and getting that routine to get your sleep back in, on track? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. So we often have to have a whole talk around something called sleep hygiene, sleep which is hygiene. the thing. Mm -hmm. So sleep hygiene is all about managing healthy sleep. And the main rules are on this. So the main rules are, first of all, try and stick to a routine. Yeah, more or less have around the same bedtime, bearing in mind the number of hours of sleep a night that you need for your age. The second is definitely switch off the devices an hour before bedtime. An hour before bedtime. Yes. And so screen time. That for mm -hmm. me is a big rule. And there's a few reasons why. One is that all of these devices tend to emit something called blue light. Right. And light from that end of the spectrum basically interferes with your body's natural sleep cycles. Specifically something called melatonin, which is a hormone that we need to help us naturally go to sleep. All that gets messed up totally with a lot of artificial lights. So essentially we try and switch that off. And then the other thing I tell teenagers in particular is do not charge up the devices in the bedroom. Charge them outside the bedroom, have a charge point that's not in your room. Mm -hmm. A lot of teens are sleeping with devices under the pillow, by the head. And that basically means that very often, although they'll tell you otherwise, you want to have your notifications definitely switched off because if they are close by to the headspace, a lot of young people are often constantly checking to see what's yes, going on. You don't want to yes. miss out. Full more. Yeah, real, full right? more, full more. And so, yeah, so you want to make sure you're just there for sleep. And for I, I, I like that point, and I would add to, to Dr. Robertson's point, in that there are some features on the phone now where you can put do not, do not disturb yes, mode. Yeah, yeah. So you set your timer. Mine is it's set at 10 p.m., so I can receive no calls unless it's from like an emergency mm -hmm. list of family mm -hmm. members, yeah. after 10, you can't reach me. Yeah. Because that's sleep time, that's bedtime for me. As the old people, they say, foul us, go and see you know. <laughs> but not only foul me too, by 10 o'clock, bedtime. Yes. And with your recommendation, is make sure that you lock off your devices at least an hour before you sleep to make sure yep. that you put yourself in that mode. And so and some I people advocate and use a go-to-bed alarm rather than a wake-up alarm, a go-to-bed to remind you it's time for bed. At a yeah. certain time. at certain point, yeah. which is which is great. At, as well with that, do not as a feature too. Sometimes it gives you an alarm. Time to get ready mm. for bed. So let's prepare for bed earlier. Get enough sleep so that we are productive throughout our day. I'm not sure if you all hear any rain in the background, but you see when rain starts to fall, I just want to sleep. But before I fall asleep, let's do a mindfulness minute. <laughs> Welcome to this Mindful Minute. Today we're going to do a mindful body scan. So just closing your eyes and just bringing your awareness to your feet. Noticing the sensation of your feet against the ground. And then slowly moving up from your feet to your legs. Maybe you notice the clothes against your skin your body against the seat. Moving up into your torso, noticing your chest, your abdomen, your whole spine, sensing your arms, and sensing your neck and your head. So coming into the body so we can remember to be here now breathe in the positivity breathe out the negativity that was your mindfulness minute we want to thank him very much once again for joining us on set always a pleasure having Anytime. you dr robertson i remember to get those sleep hours in and now we jump inside our question and answer segment let's see who sent in their video submission for their question today Hi home front, I'm Thea from Aruka. My question is, if your first vaccine shot is AstraZeneca, must your second shot also be AZ or can it be any of the other vaccines? Thank you so much for your question. 
The general recommendation is that the second dose of vaccine should be the same as the first dose. So that if you have had the AstraZeneca as your first dose, it's recommended that you have the AstraZeneca again as your second dose. Having said that, there's ongoing research on mixing vaccines. And in the United Kingdom and the US, USA, they're looking at mixing different vaccines. For example, taking the AstraZeneca as the first dose or the Pfizer as the second dose and vice versa. So far, in the people who have, done, who have had mixed vaccines, they seem to have more symptoms after the second dose. But there seems to be no change in the ability to make a good immune response to the coronavirus. Thank you again for your question. I love it when we get to interact with our audience and that's why it's so important for you to keep on sending those questions via your video submissions to the email address on your screen. So pick up your phone, take your selfie video, send us those questions and we're going to get them answered by one of our specialists, one of our professionals right here on Homefront. We want to thank our PED Cares Foundation. Without them, this would not be possible. So you'll keep on donating so that we could support all of the children on the pediatric wards, the pediatric hospital, the pediatric department right there in Mount Hope. Remember the PD Cares Foundation, they were trained the doctors, the nurses, the pediatrics. Everyone is trained by the, the PD Cares Foundation and they all give back to the kids. So let's make sure that you donate, donate, donate so we can have our kids there with us in the future. Rome, here on Homefront, thank you for joining us. See you guys tomorrow.